plug me in here. This guy behind me is a uh, American roach. I've got stories that I could tell about this guy. <laughs> People are freak out over him. Uh, the American roach is usually pretty big, um, about an inch and a half, inch to two inches long. They get big and they fly, they have wings, they fly. They fly straight for your hair because they know it freaks you out. Uh, but we're going to talk a little bit about the American roach. The American roach is totally different than the German roach. People are used to German roaches, little tiny, I mean, they're about a half inch big, full, full adult size. Uh, and they feed off, the German roaches will infest and feed off everything. These guys, the American roach, are bacteria feeders. You'll see them a lot around uh, mantle covers, that kind of thing, drains, sewer systems, that kind of thing, because they their main source of food is bacteria. Uh, Mama roach, when she has, when she lays her eggs, she lays the egg in bacteria. So when the, the little boogers hatch, the larvae can feed off the bacteria until they get old enough to go fend for themselves and find their own food. Uh, so again, you're going to see them around. I do a lot of commercial buildings and I see them in the drains all the time. Uh, the drains are wet and nasty. Uh, again, a lot of bacteria because those are mechanical drains. They're not clean very well. Uh, a lot of bacteria in there. Uh, so these are bacteria feeding roaches. They do not infest and take over your house like German roaches. German roach, a little bit of history on them. We're going to do another video on German roaches at some point. The German roach, one German roach egg sac contains about 50 little babies. In one year, that one roach you had that had eggs can produce, I have to look the data up, but it's like 35,000 babies in a year they can produce. These American roaches are completely different. They don't infest, take over like the German roaches do. Uh, but these guys, they're... <laughs> There are stories I can tell you about these guys. People don't like them. Uh, they freak them out. They freak out their brains and all kinds of stuff. And again, they're they're not in. They're not where they can infest, take over your house, and be hundreds of them now. I've seen a bunch in wood piles, uh, places like that. Anywhere there's nasty bacteria is where they're going to hang out at. Uh, again, wood pile. I just helped a friend move. That's uh, storage container that was just full of these guys because it's a dark, damp, nasty place. And that's where they come from. It's like, have you ever, you probably never done this. I have, I had to remove a mantle cover once at a restaurant and there was just thousands of these guys come pulling out of the, the manhole cover. Um, you know, that's again, bacteria, that's what they like. And so uh, to keep them out of your house, they're going to be around dark, damp, nasty places like your, where your water pipes are in the walls. That's why you'll see them in laundry rooms, the washer machine, and all that is. And uh, bathrooms, they'll come out from the water pipes. So go back to the video, so an exclusion, and seal up your bathrooms and keep these big roaches out. Uh, the sticky traps are good for catching these guys because they fly. And so sprays, people want spray for the roaches. Well, if these guys, since they fly, are walking through an area and they come across something that doesn't smell right, they don their wings and they fly over it. Uh, you know, because if, if it smells wrong, it's wrong to the roach, they just fly over it and go about their life. So the, the sprays don't work well. Baits and sticky traps are the two uh, best things for them. They will eat the bait up because baits and roach baits are nasty stuff. It smells bad. It's, it's, you know, it's a lot of, it reminds me of uh, bacteria, nasty smell and stuff. So these guys, the baits work well. Sticky traps are their best friend because they'll go in there and roaches uh, will cannibalize each other. If you don't know that. Uh, so when they see another roach stuck in a trap, They'll follow the other one, go in there because they'll 
I'll see the other roaches lunch, basically. So uh, sticky traps work really well for these guys. Put them out in your garage by the edge of the door, uh, laundry room, hot water heater. Uh, use these guys in your attics, around the AC drain pan, around the water heater if your water heater's up there. Again, sticky traps are great. I uh, talked to a guy yesterday, put two sticky traps by his uh, AC pan upstairs and two by his uh, water heater. And that's about all he'll need to, get the, to catch these American roaches. Uh, but they, again, they don't infest like uh, the Germans do. Uh, they're uh, called so. Uh, yeah, you know, the uh, occasional invader is what they're called. I lost my words. Uh, they're occasional invader. They don't like to live inside. They like uh, again things dark, damp, wet, bacteria kind of things. So they don't really care to be inside your house. Now sago palms, uh, they love those because of the big cone thing in the middle. Uh, they'll get in there and just have a field day because it's moist and wet. We've got a tree up front of our house that has a, I see them in there all the time. It's a, oh, yeah. The forks of the tree come together. Crap builds up there and it retains moisture real well. They love those. Uh, but again, most won't be outside. They're occasional invaders. They don't come in and nest, take over. They will, they can be a bunch if they've got a good bacteria source. Um, you know, but don't freak out. Uh, and again, the sp sprays for these things don't really work. The uh, can of ray, unless you spray the, him directly, it's not going to do any good because if it smells bad, it just pop out the wings, fly over it. Uh, anyway, that's our talk today on American roaches. Uh, I, I got to tell you one story about this. I had a friend, he's an adult male uh, who freaked out on these things. He had been a little and uh he was traveling on the road late at night has windows open nice weather and one flew in his car got in his hair or he said it did so he jumps out of the car with the car still in gear throws it and then he has to get back in the car throw it apart and then he's got this roach he thinks is in his hair <laughs> so he's doing the, the roach dance out there and a cop sees him doing this and thinks he's drunk off his ass and uh Pulled him over, and it was a real funny story uh, because the cop knew him, knew he didn't drink, but it was just funny because to see him out there and dance in the middle of the intersection. He was at a red light when all this happened. You know, he gets out of his car, car starts rolling, he has got to get in, throw it apart, and then he still got this roach to deal with that was trying to kill him. Uh, <laughs> they don't eat flesh, they don't kill you, they just uh, they just freak you out. Anyway, that was. My friend's story. Uh, he'll he'll remain, remain nameless to protect the innocent, uh, but they can freak people out. I hear I get stories from all the time. And some are funny, and some are just they make me laugh. But the American roach is an occasional invader uh, and easy to control uh, if you know what they do, what they like, and what they don't know. So exclusion is number one on that. Go back to videos on exclusion. We did two videos on exclusion today to uh, read those or what? Read those, or watch them and learn how you can exclude your house from the booger man eating American roach. All right, Bugman, gotta go.